Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to this week's classic episode of Angler West. This week we're fishing for Spring Chinook on the Columbia River right at Portland trolling cut plug herring. Now, at the time this episode was filmed, about a decade ago or so, Procure had just come out with the brine and bite in, in the colors like this. So right here I've got the, the natural brine and bite which won't add any color. And what the brine and bite does is just firm up your baits keeps the scales on, adds some really powerful amino acids, and adds the UV glow to it. So that's really great. So adding the color to that is just another option that might entice some fish to bite your bait. We've got the brilliant blue here and the uh, chartreuse glow. So it's always the trick is, well, which one are the fish gonna want in that particular day? Well, it's easy to figure out. You put them both out and see which ones they bite. But this has become very popular and uh, it's definitely an option that you might want to look at if you're trolling cut plug herring or anchovies or anything like that. Now, after we're done salmon fishing, we're going to go down to the Oregon and California border, in California actually, on the Smith River, and fish for some of the most beautiful steelhead you've ever seen and probably one of the most beautiful rivers you've ever seen right in the redwoods down there in California. Smith River is just a fantastic river. If you ever get a chance to fish there, I'd highly recommend it. Now, we're side drifting row. And before we go to the river, I want to point out a few things about row. Now, this is a, a cured row get from Procure, a special product that I have Procure make just for the shop here and for this particular area. And it is just a very high quality premium salmon row. It's cured up with Fuse Egg Cure and it catches fish. We sell an awful lot of it, and I'm hearing reports and seeing pictures from people, lots of fish being caught with this, and then that's great to see. And it, boy, it smells good, and this particular batch we just got in, I mean, it just looks fantastic. Now, I'm not a big pretty roe guy. I don't believe roe has to be pretty to catch fish by any means. It's more about the smell and the taste and, and how you're presenting that bait to the, to the fish, but this roe is almost pretty roe. It really does look good. And what you want to do when you're, when you're buying roe, especially because if you, you know, you're catching a fish and whatever that fish has inside of it is the roe you're going to end up with, right? But if you're buying roe, you can be a little more particular about it. What you don't want are big giant berries. You want the fish, you want the June, July fish earlier in the season when the fish are, are, have smaller berries. So say you go up to Alaska and you're catching fish in June or early July, the, the berries are going to be smaller, medium sized to small, and that's what you really want. Those are going to fish the best. Later on, late August fish, you know, it's not to say that those aren't any, any good or won't catch you fish, but they're not going to cure up as well and they're not going to fish quite as well. So what we've got here are the right size eggs, that medium to small size, which is just perfect. And what, one thing I, I hear an awful lot from people is that they, they talk about freezing their eggs. So let's say they went up to Alaska, they caught a bunch of fish, and they want to bring their eggs home. Well, that makes sense. I would too. But what you can't do is just take fresh eggs out of a salmon and throw them in the freezer, a regular freezer. Because as that slowly freezes, the water inside the egg will expand, and your egg will explode, and your eggs will just turn to mush, and that's no good. So there's, you have two options. You can cure your eggs before you freeze them. You got to cure them in some way or flash freeze them. So if you have access to a flash freezer, well, that's the way to do it. If you don't, you've, you've got to cure them some way or your eggs are just going to turn to mush no matter what type of uh, cure you use. So these eggs were flash frozen and then thawed and then cured at Procure and they're very high quality. So let's go right now to the Columbia River and see if we can not catch some spring chinook trolling some colored herring with Guy Dave Steele. The thrill of catching your first Columbia you River everybody? Spring Chinook salmon lasts a lifetime. <laughs> is that neat? And today, Keep James off. Higgins Steel. is getting his Keep chance with Guy Dave Steele. Also on board is James's father, John, and Phil Perone and Steve Lynch of Procure. We're fishing around the I-5 bridge near Portland, and so far, the predicted large run of Spring Chinook has yet to arrive. So each fish is even more precious, and few will be as lucky as James today. And you don't want that line to rub on the, the V on the bottom. Okay. Got it. 
get, give me some slack in the line. He's quick. Give me five. Yeah. Good job. Isn't that beautiful? Hey, buddy. Yeah. That's Whoa. the best outdoor school you're going to get, huh? Yeah. Good job, buddy. James, since that's your first Springer, you got to give it a big kiss. Go, come on. <laughs> oh, oh, no. I didn't get that. You got to kiss him again. There you go. Oh, you got to kiss him again. Well, All right, one more time. Come on. Give it a kiss. <laughs> Rub it off. Look at this. Look at this. Beautiful. Look at these fins. Look how thin and beautiful they are. I mean, this is just beautiful fish. Look at this. Just beautiful fish. Oh. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Your first spring Chinook. Yes. That's what we want to see. Okay, we caught that fish on a blued herring, and uh, it's cut plug, and I cleaned it out. It has um, the bait is dyed blue, which used Procure Brine and Bite, and the way I hook that up is I'm using a mooching rig put it through the side, and I run the head, the, the top hook, right through the head. And I think it's kind of important to leave that hook exposed on the head. And then I like to, what I say is, bury this bottom hook in the tail. And when I bury it, I put the shaft in like this and then run it back up, and it keeps it out straight. And that way, if the fish comes up and it makes a swipe at the head and it misses the head, catches the tail and this hook is sticking right there ready for it to to grab the hook so uh, and on this particular rod I was using a flasher I don't use flashers on all the rods um, I think the flasher will attract to the other rods That was a procure fish on that one. Garlic plus that oil, was... and brine and bite, and chartreuse bait dye. Well, that was a procure fish yeah, all the way. That's a beautiful one. Way to go, Dave. Another beautiful fish. Yeah. Look at those fins. There's sea lice on it. I noticed that we were the only one that caught two fish right away, other than that one fish. We're using the procure. I mean, uh, is that the difference? You know, I can't sweater it, but it's certainly, you know, using the procure products certainly are not hurting. Uh, we've seen three fish hooked. We've got two of them out of, out of 100 boats. Uh, I think, you know, putting colors in your baits, when you look at all the lure colors of quick fish and spinners and hoochies, why not put color on your bait? These fish are obviously color sensitive. And we, this year we're seeing the chartreuse badass bait dye and the blue badass bait dye. Guys are brining in a brine and bite, so we got amino acids on our baits and then we're injecting the baits with scent. It's just you're building a better banana split and you're turning these fish on. You know, they see 3,000 silver herring go down a river and all of a sudden there's a green one or a blue one. For some reason, it triggers an impulse and they take it. Okay, what I'm in, put, injecting is a, is a combination procure garlic scent. Uh, there's garlic and herring oil and, uh, and it's, the combination here is going to add scent for a, probably about a half hour in the water. Gives us a nice, strong scent. And that's a scent that you wouldn't consider uh, Chinook really liking so much. Uh, garlic is real strong, but it really, at times, it really brings the fish in. And uh, that last fish came on a garlic scent. And I've been very successful here in these last uh, couple of weeks using garlic quite a bit. So um, what we're doing is we have different scents on different rods, and we're just trying to see which ones they're going to be attracted to. And garlic is a is one that they seem to be hitting this morning, so that's real good. Along with the the blued and the greened bait, uh, the chartreuse dyed bait. We've got three different types of bait. We've got the ones with the the bait bright, just to make them look natural. Th then we've got them in the chartreuse, and we've got them in the blue. And it seems to be one day one has been outperforming the other. But today we've had one on the green and one on the blue. So right now it's 50-50. But this is the one that's going to get it right here. And I think they're the same one is what I think. I think so too. Keep your pole tip to the left. Go to the left. There you go. Well, we've got a fish on this rod right here. It's tangled into my rod. So all I'm doing right now is just giving it slack. I'm letting John fight the fish. 
Understand, it coming with me. Just stay up here on the edge. Lift your line. And then keep your cover. If he goes under the boat, bury your tip down in the water. There you go. Good job. Good job. This is fishing. No fans. That's a nice big fish. Nice fish. Okay, reel up. Or you want that. There you go. Bring it up. Lift it up. Lift it up. Right on. All right. Oh. Well, that, that was the garlic. That was the garlic again. That was garlic. That's garlic plus and uh, I'll croak your herring oil. Some good on stuff. A, on a chartreuse herring. Give me some slack in that one. Oh, that, that's a beauty. It's, it's not uncommon when you're running five wow. rods to get tangled up when you're, when you're fishing. When the fish takes it, it'll naturally swim to the other rods. All you have to do is just work with your partner. What's no your, big deal. Which procure bait? You get the fish in. Oh, so that was in that that when they're was running, garlic. just let them run with the other rod. Don't fight it with the, with the rod that's tangled. Just kind of give it slack. When it comes in, reel with it, and just work in unison with your partner. Wow. You'll get the fish. I've been in Oregon 25, 30 years. That's the largest Chinook I've ever caught. I don't even want to kiss the fish. I want to kiss you. <laughs> <laughs> don't get that happy. I'm just kidding. That's just an awesome fish, man. Oh, that's a pretty fish. Wow. Beautiful. Beautiful fish. Wow. Beautiful. That's yeah. half mine, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I get the head of the When you stand at the mouth of the Smith River in far northern California, it's hard to imagine that only a few short miles upstream, the Smith runs through beautiful, rugged, tree-lined canyons in the heart of Redwood Country. And while only about 20 miles long, the Smith remains California's only major undammed river, as well as one of California's most outstanding steelhead fisheries. Today we're with guide Kevin Brock, who's fishing Don Newman of P-Line and Don's brother, Bob. All right, fish on. Way to go, Don. As you'll notice, Kevin is quite Smith out of river. breath after having to row up that run five or six different times. It paid off though. We got bit in there once and I knew there were some fish there. We saw another fish get caught out of there. So we got up in there again and we hooked him. So good job. Make him jump. <laughs> Just kind of keep your balance as we go over this little rock here. You'll be fine. Just take a little dip. Dip in the boat. Keep your balance. All the fish were kind of on the tail out of that run. God, it's going to be tough for you to row back up there. No problem. We'll get it. We'll get it about 11 o'clock. This is probably one of the prettiest places you can ever fish in front of this covered bridge. I don't think it's ready quite yet. We are at the covered bridge. All right, we got here a, a beautiful wild Smith River fish. Just landed at the covered bridge. There was a couple fish caught ahead of us there, and we came through and Don got one. Really pretty fish. Really nice. We'll go ahead and grab the pliers. Get this unhook, good hook up right at the top of the jaw. You got it? No. Perfect. Wow, what a fish, huh? Oh, beautiful fish. Nice chrome. You got it? It's a wild one. Oh, it's a wild one, Kevin. So let's let her go. Yeah, let's, let's take some pictures before we let her go. And then this, this means that it's wild. If this is gone, then it's a hatchery fish. It's about an eight pound fish, about an eight pound steelhead. Just chrome bright right out of the ocean. Beautiful fish. That's little, what you come for. Little seal mark right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, but, but really pretty. Full fins, wild fish. Yeah, boy, you hooked him good. Hooked her good. I want to get the pliers to get that out. Nice job, Don. 
This is a wild hen. We're going to let her go. She's about eight or nine pounds. Beautiful. All right. When you let them go, you always want to make sure they got plenty of energy to take off. So you hold them by the tail, let them go around, boom, then they're gone. Off like All right. a bullet. Off like a bullet. All right, way Good to go, job. huh? Good job. On the Smith River, right below the forks where the middle and the south fork merge together, one of the historical landmarks on the Smith River is the covered bridge. One of the last covered bridges still used today in California. So it's a really neat spot, and it's in the redwood forest, and so it's kind of a little historical spot and another great place to land some big fish right here. A good, good place to fish with high water. So we just landed one here. There were two other boats that got one here. So it's a great start of the morning and the covered bridge is kicked out for us. So that's a great way to start. One thing I like to do is once we catch a fish, especially steelhead, you don't get a lot of them and they're big. I like to re-tie the gear. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take and we're gonna re-tie the gear and show you how we do that. I like to pull out my leaders from a Pips leader box. We've got some pre-tied in here. I'll pull those out. This is 10 pound CFX. I always like to wet my knots before I tie them. With this line here, I like to do six times around, back through, wet the knot, and cinch it down. The key thing about a cinch knot is when you cinch it down, it has to cinch smooth. If it goes smooth, it's a good knot. If it hangs up on the way down, cut it and retie it. That's real important, any type of fishing. You're not supposed to use your teeth. You're supposed to use scissors to cut it off. We're using a number four hook. Make sure it's sharp. And these have a pre-snelled on them. I pre-tied these already. I push it up and I get a little piece of yarn. I like the bright colored yarn so the fish can see it well. And I just set that yarn right into that loop. So you have this right here. That's your perfect yarn. Now you take your little piece of bait that you pre-cut. I really like to use the Procure Natural on these eggs. Makes them a nice light colored orange. I hook the bait on. Now I grab onto the yarn which pulls your loop up. It serves two purposes. Loop it over the top of the eggs. Cinch it down. Now you have your perfect nickel to dime sized piece of bait. Take your puff ball. Take one puff ball. And I like to just to skin hook it on. So it's on the hook, so you got some hook exposed, and that's your bait right there. That's all you need. Fish that, consistently fish that, and you'll catch fish on the Smith River. That's it. All right, Don, let's go get another one, huh? Yeah. Good job. All right, one of the basic ideas on the Smith Rivers when you're side drifting is do exactly that. You want to side drift. And so this is a perfect example where a spot you want to cast about halfway across the river, maybe three quarters, depending on where you're at. Keep the boat speed the same as the line speed. So you want to cast out, click your bail over right away, and then use your boat and just let it float down. It's really easy, just let it float and keep your line tight off to the side. Two things, what that does is that lets the fish get a hold of the line, hold of the bait real good so you can get a good hook set into them, and it keeps your boat off of the fish, and that's real important. Make long casts, it doesn't spook the fish, so you can continually get bites. What happened uh, just there before we caught that fish, a boat ahead of us caught one. They were side drifting, so they stayed off the fish. The next boat that came down caught a fish. If you work like that, keep the boats on the side, cast towards the middle, and don't spook the fish, then everybody can participate in getting fish, and you'll be more productive that way. And when you're side drifting, always remember, keep it off to the side, keep your line straight off to the side, and drift down the river. One of the things that helps us in higher water and murky water when we steelhead fish is using a high visibility line. Uh, P-Line CX has out a new high visibility line. It's soft, it's great for casting off spinning reels, and it lets the guide be able to see the line as it drifts down. We talked about how important it is to side drift, but with this high vis line, you can see it. When you have colored water, dark green or a murky water, the fish aren't affected by the high visibility line, and you're gonna catch more fish. You can see it. If the boat operator can see the line, you can see it, you know where you're casting, boom, you're gonna get more fish. So it's a great line, it's a good line on the, pro on the market, and it's soft, it's the CX brand in the high vis We're going left side here, little upstream, no more than halfway. Right on that edge, give it just a couple turns, got it. Good casting, you guys. Welcome back to the Smith River. I'm Justin Wolf. 
after an awesome early morning drift on the Smith, which produced this spectacular wild steelhead, guide Kevin Brock has trailered his drift boat back up to the top of the run in order to make a second pass for the highly prized Smith River steelhead. We're dropping in for our second run this morning or this afternoon. We put in this morning, had a nice drift. We drifted what, about four or five miles, Kevin? Yeah, about four or five miles down to the outhouse. When the water is high like this, a lot of times just to cover the water, we do two runs. And so it's just important just to get back up and, and do the same water again. We know where there was a couple fish hooked. We hooked a couple fish in a couple different spots. So we'll go at them and see if we can't get another one out of there. One little change I'm going to make for the second run is the water is starting to clear up. So I'm going to go to a, a hot pink color. Uh, I think they'll bite them both. We caught fish this morning on orange. But as the water clears, I like to go back to the pink. Uh, so that's what we're going to use for this afternoon. Main thing is to get a good presentation in front of them, but uh, that hot pink, it's a good steelhead color. So Kevin, going down in the afternoon, uh, are we at any disadvantage? I know this morning there was a few biters. No, as it gets, the day goes on, especially in high water, you can catch these fish anytime. Sometimes we've got some of our biggest fish on our second runs, especially when the water's high and colored like it is. So anytime you're going on your second run, and the water's got color to it, you have just an advantage. In fact, we have more an advantage because we know two or three spots where we saw right. fish hooked. So we can make our time, concentrate on those spots, roll back up on them, because we know there's fish there, try to get another one. So now we know where some are at. We've hooked some, and now we're going to go try to get some more. A lot of pressure on you now that we're dialed in, we know where the fish are at. There's no pressure on me. <laughs> <laughs> so I, if they bite, then we're going to get them. So. All right, to our left, we've got the middle fork. On the right, we've got the south fork, and they call this the forks right here. And this is all your, in all your history books and all your pictures of the Smith River. This is where it's at right here. This is the, the picture that they take. So this is where the two rivers join together and to create the main stem of the river. A lot of fish hold in here, too. I got to get them out of those willows over there, OK? When he comes down at you, he's going to come fast. Just keep All him right. tight, okay? All right, Smith River fish. You got one. You guys got lines out? Okay. You got him real close? Okay, thank Okay, thank you. At least we got him in really fast water. Yeah. <laughs> See if he comes back with us here in the corner. He comes in this corner where we're good. Yeah, he does. He goes, you're doing great with him. So much fun when you hook him in that fast water and you got to come through the heat on the oars, real aggressive. Good looking fish right there. Yeah. Oh, what a dandy. Nice. Nice wild buck. That's awesome. Way to go. Way to go, huh? Nice fish. There's a Smith River fish right there. Beauty. Nice fish. Boy, you work so hard for these fish. They're just gorgeous. What a gem. Just make sure they breathe good. If you're going to release them, always take your time. Make sure they've got plenty of energy to go. Make sure they're bleeding good, breathing good out of their gills. Oh, he's ready. He's ready. Are we ready? All right, let's make sure he breathes good. Way he goes, just like that. You know, it's pretty neat to be able to come in California and still fish a river and catch wild fish like that. One of the reasons why we have fish in the river is because of some of our steelhead derbies that we have every year. Uh, they're Rowdy Creek Hatchery Derbies, and you can participate in that. Just go on to Rowdy Creek, and you can find out what time the derbies are. Those, the proceeds go to the hatcheries, and that's what makes this river such a great one, is we all bang together produce some money for the hatcheries and we can get fish like that. So go right on, I hope I see you at one of the derbies. Hey, thanks for watching today's episode. You know, without the support of the sponsors, the show would not be possible. So please thank them when you can. Now get out there and do some great fishing.